Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. It is. I hope you had a good Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. And uh, if you didn't celebrate Valentine's Day, I hope Wednesday was pretty good for you too. That's right. It's hump day in more ways than one. There you, for yes. For some people, yes. That's valid. I didn't think about that. <laughs> well, speaking of, of screwing people over, okay. we're going to talk about um, Disney. And I guess uh, Peltz & Co. sent out another letter to investors, Disney shareholders. Yeah, this is pretty interesting because he basically said that Disney at this point is throwing spaghetti against the wall, which is yes. what we said. We said that, yeah, it just seemed very desperate. They're like, uh, humming, 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 what's big now? Oh, Taylor Swift and Fortnite, let's do that. And then they you comment, know? that Disney does comment back. I couldn't find the entire letter or whatever, but I did find some of their quotes. And it's just, they keep talking in circles, saying the exact same things over and over again without any substance. And we'll uh, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk a little bit about this video that has surfaced of Bob Iger oh, yes. basically saying, we're not going to get political, but let's get really, really political. And it, of and course, it comes out now. The and then pats himself on the back of Black Panther. Yes. He's like, but well, he admits, though, he was patting himself on the back. But now he realizes it's much more than that. It's much more than Don't that. Don't cancel me, bro. All right. So. Before we get yes. into it, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. All right. Not many woohoos over at Disney these days. I think they're freaking the hell out. Uh, it oh, feels like they're freaking out. I do. Okay. Well, I, I just every time, every day, there's something new to woohoo about. At this point, you have more woohoos than fucks to give, right? About yeah. Disney? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Um, so yesterday, uh, Pelts and Tryon Group put out another letter. They put it out on their Restore the Magic page that, of course, since they had a website for Restore the Magic, Disney had to have their own website. It was like Vote Disney or something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they both have these websites that shareholders can visit. And in this letter, he basically said, which is what we've been saying, it's like they're just throwing stuff out there last minute to try to razzle-dazzle people so they vote for them. And as I've been saying... If you could raise the stock that quickly and you could do something this entire time, why didn't you? Yeah, exactly. They waited until they had to the last minute. You know, it's kind of like, oh, I didn't work on my my project that I had six weeks to work on until like the night before. Mm -hmm. Then we just called up Taylor Swift and said, yeah, well, like, why are you seventy five million dollars? And hey, Fortnite. Oh, yeah. We just heard last week that Epic is in trouble. So let's send them a bunch of money, well, too. It's funny because people are like, well, you can't do that overnight. No, you can't. But you can, you sure as hell can do it in the month or two they've had yep. when they knew they were in trouble and the people weren't backing them, though they were backing them. And here comes Pelts and not just Pelts. Here comes Blackwell Capital. And you had Value Act out there too, but you, you made sure you made a side deal with them to keep them cozied up to you. But three different groups were coming at you. And so you had a couple months notice to try to pull something out of your ass to, to appease investors. Yeah, pretty much. And that, that's what this is all about. It's basically, this is about Disney buying itself time. This isn't about Disney actually having a plan. I don't think they have a plan. Their plan is basically just exist from one quarter to the next quarter to the next quarter, hoping that something sticks, hoping no, something they do they turned works a corner. out. Oh, okay. They turned a corner of their own making. Like they, they ran the company. This, this board has been there. Most of them have been there for years. And they put themselves in this position. They brought back Bob Iger and made it worse, put themselves in this position. And then they keep trying to say how they're the conquering hero for trying to get themselves out of their own mess. Well, it's, it's going to get really messy. The uh, surveys went out. The votes went out. Um, uh, the ballots. I know we got them the other day. And shockingly, I still owned Disney stock. I didn't realize yes. I did. Uh, one of the mutual funds I have or ETFs I have must have Disney stock in it because I had several shares I did not know I still had because I sold all my standalone stock. Mm -hmm. when and we I, had, I had shares in both standalone and ETFs yeah. as well. So I didn't know I had the ETF ones. I was like, woo. Anyway, so. Here's a letter that uh, they sent out. I'm going to read it to shareholders. This is from uh, Restore the Magic, Pelts & Co. Spaghetti on the wall will not feed shareholders <laughs> starved of returns. Uh, Disney has lost money for its shareholders a long period of time. A year ago, faced with a proxy contest that sought to bring accountability for these failures, Disney attempted to assure shareholders that a significant transformation was underway. In early 2023, Disney outlined a plan to succeed at succession – Mm -hmm. And instead, they just gave him longer term. Yeah. Reignite the company's creative engine and achieve profitability in the streaming business. Again, the profitability in the streaming business thing. 
I want to point out again that Disney, now I can't speak to Hulu, but for Disney Plus, they did save since day one. It was going to be 2024, end of year, till they yeah. were profitable. Oh, but they're nowhere close. No, that's just it. They're nowhere close okay. to it. So a year later, however, Disney shareholders are no better off. It turns out Disney's story was just a fairy tale. <laughs> Shocker. Disney's stock price is lower now than a year ago. Its streaming business lost another $1.7 billion. 2024 earnings per share estimates are down nearly 20%. Wow. Two of the Disney's last five movies have failed to turn a profit, only two. And the board has still not identified a successor for Mr. Iger. I argue that uh, there's more than two of the last five movies that didn't turn a profit. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some uh, creative bookkeeping. Because they're claiming on, but... the last five movies, only two didn't. Okay, I'm trying to think of this. How, what would they? Because we had one um, of the last five movies they did. Wish, I'm walking it backwards. They did uh, Wish. They did last year. They did Elemental, which I think finally is profitable. Uh, several Marvel movies. So the Marvels. They did the, the Marvels. They did uh, the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. That might have actually finally broken even. If it, if, okay, so it didn't profit, but okay, so maybe that's what they're going by, but it didn't make money, either, like a lot of money. It just broke even if it profited a dollar. I guess it counts as profit. Yeah, but, nobody nobody spends money to tread water. That You know what I'm right, saying? You're like, there to make money. You're there to make money, and, and they're and, not. Well, moving forward, they're already saying they're going to cut down how much they spend on these films and shows because they have to make money. So you're just telling me that you aren't making any money and you have to re, you know, examine what you're doing. Okay, back to this. Um, with the stock waning and Disney facing another proxy contest, Disney appears to again be trying to distract shareholders with what we see as a fanciful tale, claiming it has turned the corner and entered a new era. And with that, Disney announced a slew of new promises and ideas, most still in the process of being developed. That, that's just it. They, they're just like, we're doing this, but it's, we don't, it's not concrete. We're going to do something about big games. We're, and here's some, here's some blue sky art, but nothing's like really I mean, it's concrete, but it's not. Like, yeah. There's no actual plan they're telling everybody other than, oh, we're going to roll some stuff out. Oh, we're doing Taylor Swift's thing. And I think people are thinking they might do something with her. Another one of her concert series got uh, re re reputation, got taken off of Netflix. And Disney was kind of hinting around at it with some of the Super Bowl things. Yeah. So they think they might do something with that and surprise everyone, which is why they got so much money. But like, they're, they're just saying, we're going to do this, this, and this, but it's yet to be proven. Hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. They've, they've been doing this. They've been throwing spaghetti against the wall for years. I mean, I would say at least the last five or six years. It's just they keep announcing stuff. Uh, well, they, the Star Wars, they keep announcing it and then stopping Pulling it, it back. Same with the theme parks. Like, oh, look at how amazing Epcot's going to be. And it's like a fifth of what was promised. Well, it's not. A, I'd say it's more than a fifth. Probably about half. But still. Still. Maybe, you know, there's, they had to change some things. They had to cancel some rides, et cetera. Okay, anyway. So they're hoping the shareholders just believe all was well and improving, mm -hmm. which is exactly what they're doing. Razzle dazzle. Razzle this time, dazzle. Disney's spaghetti against the wall plan includes a $1.5 billion strategic investment that, according to Disney's own CFO, lacks a product roadmap or expected return targets. So they don't even have a roadmap for how much they're going to make back on it. Just, hey, we're doing it. Yay. Are you exciting? We're, moving, we're doing something. Woo. And then they aren't mentioning the fact that like, Epic has gotten sued for um, you, know, you know the child laws and for Child Protection Act, and for the fact that they were you know allegedly scamming people into like buying extra stuff mm -hmm. or they weren't very um, transparent about things, and they got sued and they have to do a settlement. Mm -hmm. They aren't mentioning that. Yeah, that, Disney investors. I would not want to throw in with Epic Games right now, given the legal headaches and given the fact that Fortnite, honestly, is kind of on the it's decline, on decline. You know, I agree. Um, so they're saying they're talking about that. They're saying uh, and a sports streaming venture that likely confused consumers, surprised important content partners and competes with the company's own services. That's true. I was like, this is very odd. They want to do this big thing with ESPN, but they're also going to do this, this deal with Warner Brothers Discovery and Fox, and they're going to do some other streaming thing, I think tying somehow into ESPN, but it's not ESPN. It's something different, separate. You pay for it separate. And it is very, I was even like, what the hell is this and why? Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, understand. I don't understand what they're doing. It just seems like, it, again, it's just like, oh, yeah, we'll just... It's just spaghetti against the wall. It's like, yeah, we'll do some uh, some uh, sports stuff and we'll do some. And then we're seeing 
you know, with uh, with Star Wars, it was like they were like, oh, we're going to do a Ray movie. Oh, 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 people don't like that. OK, we're going to do a Grogu movie and a Mandalorian movie instead. Yeah. That's going to come and first. Didn't even mention, he didn't even mention the Ray movie, did he? I don't think no, he did. No, I don't think he did. He might have. I know he did the Mandalorian and Grogu, but I don't know if he did mention the Ray I, I feel like they're test marketing. I feel like they announce this stuff to see how people react. And if they react positive, then they actually do it or try to do it. And if they don't, they just memory hole it. Yeah. Just, oh, we never said that, which we see in Star, like Lucasfilm do all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But frenetic activity in the face of proxy contest is no substitute for a well-considered corporate strategy, nor is throwing spaghetti at the wall going to feed shareholders who have been starving of returns for, for so long. But don't, don't forget, they're going to do a $3 billion stock buyout, and they're also going to like give you all 50% more next time. Disney shareholders need the company to consistently perform under a watchful eye of a diligent board. That is the recipe for good eating. <laughs> it's funny. To improve the focus, alignment, and accountability of the board, Disney needs new independent directors. Help us elect Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo, who pledge to ask hard questions, work with the rest of the board of management to develop thoughtful strategies, align the interests of executives with shareholders, and hold the leadership team accountable for performance. And to do so all the time, not just when the company faces a proxy contest. That's it right there. Yes. To do so all the time, not just when you know you're going to face a proxy battle. Yeah, the only reason Disney is doing anything, the only reason they're announcing anything, they've been sitting on their hands, they've been resting on their laurels. The only reason they're making it appear like they're going to change direction or mix it up a little bit is because of the proxy battle. If the proxy battle would not happen, if they all had their jobs forever, cushy job forever, then they wouldn't have announced any of this stuff because they didn't need to. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, I'd be sitting there like, all your movies are bombing at the box office. What are you doing? I know, that's what they're saying. And it's not just the movies. It's like the Universal's going to kick your ass next exactly. year. What are you doing? So what's funny to me was, okay, so what what is Disney's usual response? When you bring up this kind of stuff, and Iger gets up there, he, I mean, I don't know if you even pay attention enough because you don't pay attention to this, but if, I watch it all the time. And usually you hear something like, we are the most talented, skilled Story people. Storytellers. Yeah, with that. Yeah, or they're like, yeah, we're <laughs> like, great. Tell, our tall board tales. is all diverse and skilled, and we can do all this stuff. We already have the best board for the job, and we you don't want to change up in the leadership. Now it's going to mess up our plans and all this other shit. And, that's exact, and they don't answer any questions. They just deflect with that same old bullshit. And that's exactly what they do. That's exactly Deflection. what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing that gets me about Bob Iger and, and I was thinking about this. I was actually literally thinking about this earlier today. I was like, the thing that gets me about Bob is the way he speaks of the Disney company. He speaks of the Disney company like it's his company. Like, yeah. Like he created Disney. He's also he's also a lot of times like you always are trying, but he's also patronizing at the same time. He I is kind of like it's my company. And it's like, no, you're a parasite. The company existed. The company was in better condition. Maybe it wasn't as big because you gobbled up a bunch of stuff. But the company was in a better position for a better long-term future before you came in and started gobbling up everything. I think everything. as soon as he started really worrying about his legacy and he got a couple wins with Marvel and Pixar, and I think you know, originally Star Wars people were excited about too. Then he just got like, you know, oh, I could, my, I'm just going to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And then everybody will they'll always remember me. Well, they're all going to remember you, Bob. Don't worry. So in, in a statement... This came from Deadline. Um, here's what Disney said back. I don't have all of it. This is what I could find. Delivering ambitious, ambitious growth plans requires leadership with a deep understanding of the company's current strengths and assets. It's robotic at this point. Mm. Disney, The Disney board has the range of talent, skill sets, experience, and professional backgrounds that are particularly relevant to the company's business and strategic objectives. Resistance is futile. Yeah, it's the same <laughs> shit. They don't actually address the issues. They just say, keep saying the same thing over and over. So it's just like going on and on. It's basically the same old same old, we've already heard it. Excuses. Over over they're yes. buying time. All they're doing is trying to buy time and they're counting on, and they might get their way, but they're counting on their Disney fans being asleep at the wheel complacent. as well and being complacent, and being putting like all their trust in Bob Iger, putting all their trust in Bob. And it's like, no, we like Disney. We don't want to vote against Disney because Disney is Disney. And Bob says, vote for Disney. And this mean old man wants to come in and change Disney. It's like, no, this mean old man and the former CE or CFO, rather, uh, who was supposed to be the CEO of Disney, or he was he was pegged to be one of the oh, pegged <laughs> was, <laughs> like that Deadpool. Um, no, but he was supposed to be one of the potential uh, replacements for Bob Iger, Jay Rizzullo, who worked under Eisner, Eisner when things were much better. 
Um, yeah. So that mean old man and uh, and Jay Rizzullo, who's got years and years of experience, who was at uh, Disney, I think before uh, Iger was even at Disney. Yeah, he's going to come in and he's going to change the company for the worse. I'm sure he is. Now they're 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 trying to save the company. Like Bob Iger is out of control. That's what I'm saying. It's like if they could do something about this and they could just turn around in like a month's time, make all these announcements and run the stock up. Why were they not doing anything for months? Yeah. And all, all they've done was cut, make a bunch of cuts, yeah. save some money. That's pretty much it. They just fired a bunch of people, streamlined some stuff. And now they're like, oh, now we're ready to go do other things. Meanwhile, they're still releasing movies that don't perform well. Moving forward, we're going to do less spending on shows and films. But that's not going to impact anything until probably next year or the year after. You still have all the expenditures for this year. These idiots are the ones that thought it would be a good idea to re-release Soul and, you know, Turning Red and uh, uh, Luca and lose money that way, too. Uh, yeah, like that was I mean, they, they were trying desperately, I think, to claw back some of the money they spent because they're not going to make as much money no matter how you slice it on Disney Plus And you drop two hundred million dollars on a on a cartoon and it doesn't go to theatrical and i don't know if they're selling them on blu-ray or not or if anybody's even buying them or what's going on with that so they're like yeah we're gonna try to claw back some money but it was you know five hundred thousand dollars like I know. that's that's nothing compared to what you spent it's just it just makes sense and then you want to talk about about um the, yeah so we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about this this does briefly. not help you uh, Iger. this does not help no and I, I i believe i mean i'm gonna be honest i believe this was uh calculated to drop this video now uh, because everybody's voting right now mm -hmm. on whether or not, you know, the board stays well, who do you intact. Think is calculating it, Iger or the competition? Pelts, Pelts I that think Pelts, is. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I 100 percent believe that. I think they've been holding this one. They're like, okay, fine. You don't think the board needs to change? You don't think Disney's gotten weirdly political? Here's Bob Iger himself in a video from uh, what was it? Right after January 6th. Yeah. And uh, he's basically saying like, we're not political. We're not a political company, but you know, this isn't a political thing, but January 6th and black lives matter. You know, and here, da, 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 take da, da. a sidestep for a minute about the January 6th thing. Okay. Look, I'm You're I just, allowed to, I don't care. <laughs> I just saw, I figured I was even looking at this morning and there was a video and I had to watch a commercial about the, some group who's mad about January 6th before I could watch the, um, the, the video. And look, January 6th was wrong, shouldn't have happened. I agree 100%. But I also think that months and months and months of riots and destructions of businesses and people and all kinds of, all that shit should never have happened either. And there are a bunch of politicians they have on record that were egging that on as well. If one's bad, so is the other. I'm tired of hearing the January 6th, the insurrection. Meanwhile, we had people arrested not that long ago for other protests in D.C. over the Palestine-Israel thing. You don't hear anything about that, do you? Nope. We have months and months of riots before. And before you're like, well, that's because you're a Trump lover. I, I'm i not. Like, I mean, I, I'm not going to say he did shitty things when he didn't. But I'm not going to say he's great when I don't think he is either. But I'm just saying it's like, I think this is stupid. Because if you're going to say one's bad, so is the other. And I'm tired of hearing that. that one was terrible. And the other, months and months of destruction, death, you know, riots, theft, all that was was okay. I'm like, I'm tired of hearing it. If one's bad, so is the other. And frankly, they're both bad. Sorry if you get pissed. I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, so this anyway, was Iger. Back to, back to Mickey Mouse. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. We're going to talk about this. Uh, Christopher Rufo, who I think is the same guy who dug up the yeah, Reimagine re Tomorrow, tomorrow which was. turned out to be true. It was. It did. And this is uh, Bob Iger on a Zoom call basically saying, hey, yeah, we are political and we're 100% uh, uh, on the left. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to get political, but now I feel we have to is basically because what he said. Because of, of the Capitol riot. Yeah. In January 2021, then Disney chairman Bob Iger told employees he was committing the company to taking a stand on politics because of January 6th and praised himself for making Black Panther. He does, uh, which he said was an example of diversity and inclusion. He wrote alongside the video. That is true. Um, but he did also say that he rested on his laurels. He was kind of being arrogant about it and it wasn't enough. He's still arrogant. about. It. I think I Bob Iger did some things that were very right for Disney, but I think he's been corrupted by power. Bob Iger he's... also had made it very clear for them not stepping into politics. He stepped into things a lot. He wanted to be president because he, he was right. He was, he was yes, office, or he yeah. was running for. He trying to get himself an ambassadorship with China and all that. Shit. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And of course, did they go in with Tencent with Fortnite too? Mm -hmm. that, that was probably a very easy deal to make. Sure it was. You we know. do this quick. Where are the kids into? Oh, I know Tencent. I know people. By, I know people over there. I got yeah. I know people. I know a lots of, of people. Bunch of CCP friends over there. <laughs> pretty much. Uh, pretty much. 
M I C C P. <laughs> um, not K K K. M O U S C. Okay. Um, yeah. So we said we've kind of. I'm, we're not going to run the video because then we'll get hit or whatever. And it, it, it is kind of rambly. But um, he said we've kind of shied away from politics. This is Bob Iger. And doing so. Win. Yeah, right. <laughs> and doing so, I think we've shied away from talking about issues that aren't political at all. He said in roughly two minute clip. Rufo posted. Now, we don't know the full context of it. This was part of, I think, one of their Zoom calls on diversity and inclusion and yada, yada, yada. But uh, th- this is where it gets off the freaking rails, though, because he's saying we're, we're going to get political, but we're not political. Mm-hmm. He continued because we believe in doing so. Maybe it looks like we're taking a stand, but reality, we should be taking a stand. By the way, I take responsibility for this. I was CEO for 15 years. They yeah. managed the company's public facing processes and how we were portraying ourselves. So, yeah, he goes on to say that we, we know it was fundamentally wrong. It was rooted in hatred, disrespect, and contempt and intolerance. But he basically says r- right here, he says because of January 6th. You know, it's not because of January 6th, Bob. It's not. You guys were definitely left-leaning before. But they basically use that as a reason to go hard in the paint. But why were – you know what they, what they do with, the, with the, the riots? They use it as an excuse to announce the Tiana Rethi that no one wanted – because yes. then you couldn't fight back or you were a bigot. Yeah. So there's a story behind this, that the story, as I understand it, is that the Princess and the Frog, when they were making the movie, they actually had in mind that they were going to replace Splash Mountain with it. Because Disneyland is New Orleans Square. Yeah, it's in New Orleans Square. It's over by the Haunted Mansion. And um, so this was always something because they've always in the back of their mind. I know there were people that weren't happy with them doing it. And the only reason they did Song of the South was because they had the animal animatronics and it made sense. and It was cheap. I mean, let's be honest, right? So um, they were talking about retheming it, reskinning it for for uh, Tiana. And then it got tabled because the movie didn't do very well. This is the story. It wasn't I've, just that. People, every time they bring up about changing, they people, get mad. People they get, get mad. Fans would complain. Enough that it was, you know, obvious that they shouldn't do it. Right. But now they're like, because of... BLM, they were like, well, we don't give a shit what our audience thinks. This is what we're doing, and that's it. Because if you you disagree, you're a bigot. Yeah, but do you honestly think they pulled up? Because they had, like, within a day or two of BLM, they had this, like— Elaborate concept art. They did not just pull that yeah, out of their ass. Yeah, they were announced and they were doing it. Yeah, because yeah. they've been trying to do it. They've for been a while. trying for a while to do. But this. they used use the they use the the unrest to try to advance themselves. Yes. And then and if you could, so you couldn't complain or you're a bigot. But again, like I want to point out, I I think the whole thing is like you know you're okay with one you know supposedly bad act, but not okay with another. That makes me like hmm. I I don't remember the Walt. Does I could be wrong. Um, somebody will probably fact check me on this, but I don't remember the Walt Disney Company in the 60s commenting on the Vietnam War. They might have. I, don't, um, I wasn't there. I don't remember them. I mean, other than, you know, Mickey for president, I don't remember yeah, them. Yeah, but really then Walt was in there at World War II and everything really hard. Walt, Walt was in there. Yeah, Walt testified uh, against uh, communists, oh, yes. basically socialists. Now, here's where it's weird. So part of me is like, are they trying to over? Because that keeps coming up. Like, do you think Walt would be okay with everything going on? No, I don't think he would. I mean, I think Walt, for the most part, was fairly apolitical. I think he definitely had old fashioned conservative American values, but I don't think he was as. I think there was a time that, and I still believe this, that you shouldn't talk religion or politics if you're a business. Yeah. And I think that was just basically the mantra and it worked. Because you always alienate at least half and your you audience. Step in it. And, and you're people, better. You're allowed to have your own opinions, just don't right. air them everywhere. And people want to watch a movie, they want escapism, they don't want to be lectured. To, um, doesn't mean you can't hide messages in there. You can. They do it all the time. Just gotta be more subtle. I think just, a, they just make it too, too uh, you know, in your face. I think that's the uh, the difference that I've noticed because people are always going on about like Star Trek and stuff being progressive back in the day. And I'm like, yeah, it was. The difference is they didn't scream at you. They didn't tell you you're stupid. They didn't just assume you're a Nazi and it was their job to convert you to whatever school. You know what I'm saying? It was like, mm-hmm. no, they, they portrayed both sides. They would try to make a, a point that would be a parable or whatever. But it wasn't like, you know, we're going to scream at you and tell you you're an awful person, you know. And if if you think this before you even watch our show, then don't watch our show at all. I know. It's just stupid. But, yeah, so he goes on and on about it. And it was just a whole thing. And they unearthed it. And it was from 2021. But... It, but what got me was where he was just like, you know, but I'm the one who did Black Panther. And what was the other it was Black Panther? And then there was something else he brought up. Um, uh, oh, uh, Coco. Coco. I did Coco, Black Panther. I'm sure the people that worked on those movies, I'm sure they, they really, they thank you personally, Bob, for that. I think it's, you know, what I'm saying, like, come on. 
I just I, think it's funny. I don't I don't see Bob Iger being that involved in day-to-day -day operations. I don't think he I mean, he's so out of touch that he thought they could just drop Star Wars land based on or a Star Wars land based on the sequel trilogy, which was declining in popularity and everybody would just flock to it because it's Star Wars. That's how out of touch he is. Anything with the Disney name on it, anything with the Marvel name on it, anything with the Star Wars name on it, especially Marvel, Star Wars, and Pixar, because I bought those. Anything with the, that brand on it is pure gold because it's mine. It's mine. I touched it. I licked it. It's yep. mine. All right. We're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. Okay. So please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.